What, what does the Asian press think of your books? I've been fortunate. I've had very good press in, uh, in Asia, uh, in the region from Hong Kong to, to Bangkok uh, to Tokyo. Uh, the, the series actually uh, started in 1992 with Spirit House, and that's actually quite a long time to be writing a series, and it was probably one of the first series about crime set abroad that seemed to find a market. And now there are a lot of, you find series that are set in Istanbul and North Korea and Gaza, but all kinds were, of places. You were one of the first. I was one of the first to do it. Yes. And not, you're not saying that the air gate, you were literally one of the first. I can't think of any. That were I, uh, and it was, it was interesting because I was picked up by a lot of foreign publishers for foreign language translations. But not American. But not American. It took the Americans a while to kind of catch on to the fact that there is an audience for hard-boiled noir set in locations outside of North America. I mean, this is way out, North America too. It's way out. It's 12,000 miles. You can't go any farther until you start going back. Have you gotten the attention of the monarchy at all? I don't know. Uh, I think that it, the, the books are, are translated, at least some of them, into Thai. Uh, the English language editions are available in the bookshops. And so whoever walks into a bookshop and says, I'd like uh, the latest novel about Vincent Calvino, they can usually find it. What, what, what inspires you to write these politically charged novels? I think what ins inspires me is there's always a sense, from a Western point of view, of looking at elements of justice and fairness. And, and in a sense, that is what a lot of noir and hard-boiled hard crime fiction is about, is that when there's an injustice, how does the system gear up to process so that there is a resolution of that or a non-resolution of that? So doing that in another country, you have to learn something about their culture, their history, their language, and their legal system and how that system works. So it was a great learning experience for me to see how things like injustice get processed, and how often the Asian way of looking at uh, community, neighbors and colleagues and friends, and authority, status and rank, often are higher values than fairness. For the past eight years, um, we've, America has had President George Bush, and a lot of people do the hyper, I, 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 hyper people hyper people of saying he's like a dictator when he's clearly not he's not a good person but he's not a dictator right. what do you think of that I think that that's right it things like dictator is kind of a, 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 a broad a broad stereotypical thing that has lost a lot of content a lot of words we think they have meaning but they're used in in a kind of a broad sense and so I think, uh, you're, you're probably right, with George W. Bush, there was a lot of criticism of his policies and the fact that he had power and authority to have those policies led those who disagreed with the policies to call him dictatorial. He actually attained power. Fairly. And fairly, and so as a result, you can disagree. It's just like uh, President Obama now has power, and he's changed policies, and there'll probably be people who disagree with them, and because they disagree, may call him a dictator. So it tends to be a term that's not used very artfully. Do you think your fiction is gonna change now that we've had, America has a new president? We've moved into the 21st century for black president. You know, it, it's, a, it's a possibility because so much of what happens in America has an impact elsewhere. And people look to America often as the true level of what is fair, what is just, what is moral, what is ethical. And so if you have a perception of unethical or immoral uh, conduct, like uh, rendition in illegal prisons and so forth, that sets a tone elsewhere in the world. Did Bangkok watch our elections closely? Yes, the whole world watched the elections very closely, certainly in, in Bangkok. 
Uh, my wife and I, we stayed up and uh, watched the results on, we shift back and forth between BBC and CNN. So was it a topic of a conversation like it is for everyone here? Well, absolutely. Everyone in the expat community was talking about it. The ties were talking about it. I mean, this was really a worldwide phenomenon. It was the most historical election probably in history. There's no question about it because it really did mark a change of attitude, uh, a change of policy, and a change, I think, of morality for the better, for the rest of the world. Whether you think of um, Obama um, while struggling to keep up the economy, which is a whole job in itself, sure. keeping things like rendition. But I think, you know, Obama came to uh, the presidency with an enormous legacy of bad policy He's inherited something which no one would want to inherit. At the, and, and that includes a lot of policies. So people look at the first couple of months as if eight years can be changed in two months or three months. That's not realistic, it seems to me. I don't think they're giving him a fair chance. The thing I think a lot of the world likes of Obama is that he doesn't have the insularity that one associates with a lot of Americans. I mean, he lived in Indonesia. He went to school there. His father was from Kenya. So he has a kind of a adaptability to culture and the larger world that George W. Bush never had. He has a worldly, but accessible look to him, right? He, he, has, he has a sense that other people around the world can relate, that he's had experiences in his life that are much closer to their own than someone like a George W. Bush or a John McCain. Has the Iraq, war in Iraq affected your fiction? I think the, the, the war in, in Iraq, I wouldn't say it's had necessarily a direct impact, but the last uh, book in the series, Paying Back Jack, has to do with private contractors in that war who use Bangkok as a base of operation. Have you read the expose novel, a book on Blackwater? I forget who it's by. Uh, it was fairly big here. Y yes, and the the, the I, I did a fair amount of research on the whole Blackwater phenomenon of how so much of the war was privatized, and how so many of the people involved in security operations were from a private sector. And the the media used such kind words as contractors that. It's a mercenary. Right. The, the modern day euphemism of a mercenary would be a private contractor. Do you think um, private, de a private detective, um, they, that's their life. They have to deal, um, peel back the layers, finding what's real. Yes. And in a place like Bangkok, uh, there are a lot of layers to peel back in order to find out the true identity of the people that you're dealing with, because it's not necessarily apparent. Does Calvino consider himself more American, or is he part of Bangkok now? I think the identity of the character obviously will change over time in certain kinds of ways, but fundamentally, he comes with that Western point of view, that the moment you start compromising your view of, of what you believe is ethical or fair, that's when you lose yourself. Because from a, and from a writing standpoint, standpoint uh, Calvino has to keep that outsider feel. Yes, he does. He has, to, he has to keep on the outside, and at the same time, by being this outsider, you, you define the outside by the people who are inside the system, and how he skirts around that and manages to stay safe and sound at the end of the day. Now, he's a... Um, He's not a Christian, he's a Buddhist. Right. Did he, how did he come about that? It came about Buddhism when you live in a place like uh, Southeast Asia over a certain period of time. I guess Buddhism is as much a part, uh, integrated in the culture as say Catholicism would be in Italy or Spain. Or Christianity. Yeah, America. yeah, exactly. Okay, well, it was very nice interviewing you. Uh, Thank you. I hope we I hope to see you again. I hope to see you as well, Cameron. Thank you. Thank you.